probably play a bit of that seedling. So exclamation mark Discord and right at the end of the seed. Hello everyone. Let's see if this is working. Let's see if it's working. This is the trouble. I watch Garrus the Brit stream. And then I start my own stream. And sometimes I get so caught up in his stream and chatting with him, him, him that I forget about my own stream, which is rather silly. Hello everyone, how are we doing? So this is the first time doing this stream with the new camera. New camera, slightly wider than the old camera was. And um, still working on how to condense that down. Working out how to condense it, basically. That's the problem. I've got to sort of slightly get the image. But it is a lot better in many other ways. So I'm kind of very happy with it for my normal sort of gaming. For the YouTube, uh, for the Twitch streaming, it's a bit of a on the big side. But I can make myself smaller. So that is what I'm going to do, and I'm going to position myself up over in the corner. And hopefully that won't cause too much trouble, me hiding up over here. So hello everyone, I'm on the corner. <laughs> I can see you all. Actually, considering I more often not go look this way when I'm looking at the chat, and that's going to be looking out of the screen, I should probably put myself over here, shouldn't I? Because that'll be more natural, because I'll be looking into the screen rather than looking away. That will make more sense. And let's continue the campaign from last time. We only have one campaign going because, as I said before, I'm not particularly that into campaigns. I know you should do the battles, but... Because I'm testing out the history. And in this campaign, I have been testing out quite a lot of history. I've been testing out the history of battle cruisers, And now I'm at the point at which, honestly, I am probably heading towards um, fast battleships. I'm definitely heading towards fast battleships in 1913 too. Um, I've got some tech to get though before I can get them. I've got an naval invasion going on. Oh yes, I'm invading France. I need more tonnage there. Can I get more ships from anywhere? Do I have more ships anywhere? Do I have the ships anywhere I can send? They're both repairing or in battle. There's a convoy fight going on. What's a convoy fight? Two of my light cruisers. Two of my Chester class, I'm hoping. Oh yeah, that's got hull defects. This is that, that, that. Um, fight. Auto resolve. Yeah, I thought it'd be a victory. Can I move these ships now? Yay, I got that one out. Um, these ships are terrible to have here. And Gafia, yes, will go. But why have they just all been positioned in Corsica? Corsica's a terrible port to send them to. It's tiny. We have literally got bigger ports. Well, not really that big of ports. Around here. But that has a capacity of 36,000 tons. And we have nearly 300,000 tons of ships in there. Um, being repaired. Oh, okay. That's just... I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. What are the Americans up to? Americans aren't doing much at the moment. That's fine. They're all American. That's fine. What are the French doing? Nothing too problematic, I hope. I've got some cruisers sitting in there. I've got... In Suva, Va Suva Bay, I have got two light cruisers and some submarines. That should be enough to keep that area present. Shame I can't do some invasion of some of the... Let's see, can I do any invasion? I'm doing invasion already. Can't do any more actions. Next turn. Anyway. Hello, everyone. 
I'm not sure if anyone's watching me. But if not, hello. If you are, yay. Today's going to be a fun day, because today, well, I had a very nice, very lovely arri arrival. All, a whole load of, um, Hutchinson's pictorial history of the war have arrived. And they are going to be the entire, they are going to be the focus of my brew ships for a few weeks. These are World War II published week by week magazines of the war. And I managed to pick up a whole load of them. A whole, whole load of them. Um, I, why is, why is my battle cruiser doing this? A draw. Okay. Let's see. Let's fight. That's us. Thirty-three. Thirty-three knots. Um, top speed twenty-four. Top speed. Oh, we can run this one. I will run this battle. I'm not sure why they were out. They weren't even supposed to be out. They were supposed to be in harbour. Not mucking around beating up the French. So, the French have got... You're on with 13 and a half inch guns. A whole load of six inch guns and some four inch guns. You're a great ship, but um, I don't want to do this fight. Not at the moment. As capable and as much of a basically based on a hood slash some slight improvements going on. I don't want to. And you've got my older style light cruiser. This is my previous before Chester class came in. They're both older style light cruisers. So again, I prefer not to get these into such a fight. They are being, they've been put down the presence rolls. This is basically the equivalent of my C and D class in World War Two. Uh, you know, in this time period. So these are my World War One era light cruisers. Uh, they're very nice ships. I like them a lot. In the World War, in the 1910s, they absolutely rule today. But it's 1930s. That I don't want them in a fight. I just want them. They just. I don't want to replace them just yet because I, you know, haven't got around to it. And I, other ships are in more critical areas. It's the same with this. This is not my newest, greatest battle cruiser. It's a good ship, but not my newest. And I think this should be over very shortly. We are retreating at high speed, as fast as they can go. I don't think they have a single ship that can keep contact with us. Definitely not their battle cruiser. So why it wouldn't allow me to withdraw from combat, I don't know, because... Even these can outpace them. And that thing certainly can. Oh, 
right, Karumba. It's a nice Sunday. It's a nice day. Oh, and now it's a freak viewers. Hello. I just got a beep going. Previews. Cool. And I'm going northwest as fast as I can. And they're making smoke as well to give them extra coverage as they disappear off. Hello, Alios History. Enemy smoke might be swatted to the southeast, but it hopefully won't be any near, anywhere near me. They're still following me. Cute. We didn't lose anything. That's good. Hmm. So today's timing requirement, today's timing requirement is always the same thing. It's the fluffs, and they're walking, uh, walking and about four o'clock-ish. And now, this is the kind of fight I do like. Yes. So, this is the fight, uh, the kind of, that, that, they're able to do 22.8 knots. My battleships are able to do 21 knots, so they can be outrun. But we've got a battle cruiser that can outrun them, and outfight them. Light cruisers can outrun them and outfight them. Oh, Newfoundland, Chester class. Two Chester modified Chesters as well. Oh. This is going to be good. Oh, this is going to be very good. So, I basically, I'm going to have a fast wing. And I'm going to have a slow wing. So, let's fight this battle. Let's run this battle again. Amaga. Yes, yeah, still having issues with the French. I'm not sure why they keep declaring war on me. I'm bigger than them, and I'm prettier than them. This just shouldn't be the case. You know, it. at this point, you don't. You, you never declare war on someone who's bigger and prettier than you. Um, it's just wrong to do so. Oh. Well, avoid and carry on. You... You three are going to screen, uh, screen. Yeah. You are going off hunting. And, um, enjoy. You two can do whatever battle shit you feel like doing. You are Agamemnon and King George V. I trust you two to go off on your own and sort problems out. Wow, you're my old... Oh, how old a battleships are you of mine? You've still got 12-inch guns. Oh, good lord, I think they're first-gen. They're first-gen battleships. It's not much off a first-gen battlecruiser. This is the Super Hood, which was armed with 12 13 and a half inch guns. Small uh, uh, a small issue I do realise I now cover, being where I am, a important part of the screen. Hmm. 
Yeah, but she's not my flagship, is she? Let's be honest. I've shifted flag. I'm on Naomi. That's where I am. That's where I would be on Naomi. Yes, I am setting my museum piece to do my fighting for me. It's it's quite disturbing. Although, to be fair, they are being supported by this lot. Um, a battle-hardened Newfoundland, which looks like she's been through many, many scrapes. And I'm going to guess the other two light cruisers in this particular division. Oh. They look... They are only capable of 33 knots, not 36 knots. But they lost, sacrificed those three knots in exchange for having 12 six-inch guns rather than eight. So basically turning from a Leander into a town. Having 12 four-inch guns instead of eight, which is a nice addition. And having more armor and range. So yeah. She's low fuel. Kairu is also low on fuel. She's not low on fuel. Okay, so, Newfoundland. What we'll do with you is we'll stick you into that division. Both of you go to maximum speed. You two are now going to go back to screen... them. So that you don't have to go fast. And you'll support here, her in engaging these. No, we are not ending the battle because they go behind a smoke screen. We're going to go into the battle, and we're going to engage more closely. Because you have 13 and a half inch guns, and I have no idea, I've forgotten what they have, but I doubt it's enough to deal with 13 and a half inch guns. They're light cruisers. Most of my museum pieces have been upgraded at various points. Um, in her defense, I think Newfoundland... <laughs> I think this ship coming up behind me probably should be in dry dock, judging by this. I think she needs to be going through major repairs. <laughs> but no, she's with me in the battle line. Hello. And they're now in six inch range of Newfoundland, which is not good for them. Let's see, what are these? Oh! Yeah, well, you see, you I might, you can make the case that mine could be my equivalent of new museum pieces, but let's be honest, the French ships should never have been built, let alone be museum pieces. Oh my, they've double stacked their guns. Some of these ships are already having trouble dealing with what's coming, and it's just getting closer, and... Look, there's something you should know about my light cruisers. They have a rate of fire that will make many, many of their opponents cry. I should be watching more, because otherwise I'm going to get torpedoed again. As it is, I think I managed to bow hit that, so that should be okay. I 
I have no idea what you were doing. But have you decided... Oh, Newfoundland's now in charge of this group. Newfoundland's taking the lead over the battlecruiser. That's fine. Honestly, considering the sheer quantity of torpedoes Newfoundland carries, I'm fairly certain I could take them out using Newfoundland. We do need to increase uh, uh, increase the speed at which I load torpedoes. Really need to work it out. Because, you know, there are torpedoes in the water here. Admittedly, I am planning on literally sailing between the two ships, um, which is probably kind of evil, but and is not something you should normally do unless you are going incredibly fast and you are planning on launching an absolutely metric ton of torpedoes at the one which is actually stronger. But seeing as the one which isn't stronger is thinking, I can get very close to her. And I will do. Supposed to be a high degree of probability for a hit, so let's see. Is this spread going to come in and is there going to be a hit? I think this ship should could be in trouble. This ship could be in a lot of trouble. And its stern could be in especially. A lot of trouble. Newfoundland, you're once again showing yourself to be the toughest of my um, delivery systems. And you seriously are the toughest. Where is my battle cruiser? I'm fairly sure I had one of those around here a second ago. You're in the same frigating division. Nyobe, get here now. Where are? What are you doing? What 
what are you doing? I do not know. Battle cruisers, seriously. Hello, Paul Amos. How you doing? Um, mum's. Let's put a spoke. They now have a plan. They know what we're going to be doing. They're feeling happy about it. I'm not so. I'm. I'm still working out the logistics of that plan, but we have a plan. But no, still not that well. Well, never know. But, uh. See me, battle cruiser. You're supposed to be the one that I'm doing here. Are this? It's not supposed to be a light cruiser doing all the work for you. I sent a light cruiser to assist you, not to do the work for you. And honestly, at this point, is when you need Cairo and Seven to show up, because Cairo and Seven are the ones which have really been, you know, designed for this kind of fighting in mind. Because, it's going to sound strange, but one of the first conscious things I do when I'm designing ships in UAD for a campaign mode, is I do design them to fit the style of fighting which I tend to do, which is to go for the maximum kill. And to do that, you almost always need to close the engagement range down. Hard. Get in close and make sure you score something which will actually kill that opponent. Because I don't like my enemy to be repairing damaged ships. I like my enemy to be having to build new ships. Because again, that fits my advantage. My advantage is infrastructure. I am actually can better. I'm actually more better equipped to replace my ships than any of my opponents in this game. Historically, that's fairly accurate with Britain for most of this period. They have the infrastructure, they have the maritime industry to do so, so they can do. So, in a nice way, you can afford to be disaggressive when you can afford to when you can replace your losses. It's one of the scary things about when we start talking about uncrewed naval warfare, when crew uh, when it no longer becomes an issue of replacing crew, but manufacturing these systems. Add in 3D printing, and it's the industrial power which is going to matter most. And the ability to conceive of how to use the 3D printing. Yeah, logistics is always a headache. Logistics is always a headache. It's mainly logistics of sorting everything out. But, you know, we'll sort that out. I've got no torpedoes left. You back off. Um, get out of there as quickly as you can. You come in and kill it. Come on. You can take it out. At that range, 13 and a half inch shells should be wrecking you. There is the fact you're fire fighting back is amazing. I am very proud of you, but if you end up hitting her, I am going to have words of you, battle cruiser. Surrender due to high casualties. Okay. Hello, Jonathan Moon. My weakness is building capacity of strength. <sighs> that is the interesting thing about history. And also how untidy my room is at the moment. But I can cover that that way. I have to remember my hand gestures with this particular this camera. And yeah, my room is this untidy because at the moment I have um, 
I have upped my snack game considerably. Well, I both upped the in healthiness, but also downgraded in cost. Because I managed to get, I got, instead of buying cashew nuts or anything like that, I bought a whole load of monkey nuts. The thing is, you actually eat less of them, because it takes more effort to get into them. <laughs> so they last for longer. That's my theory, anyway. We'll see if it works. Okay. Anyway. If you live in the UK, um, there's a course, oh, well, now, there is a course five guys where you can get these, but there's also, uh, what's it called? Oh, there's a couple of other restaurants, which, including a very good one, which I quite, I really like, which is on Box Hill, which does it. Um, Smith and Weston. Oh yeah, so Smith and Weston on Box Hill. Smith and Weston must usually do these as well. Oh, I see a battle cruiser commanded by destroyer officers. I try. I love this. Minus how many ships I got. I named the battleship Queen Mary. It exploded. Don't name something Queen Mary. Um. So that's the 60,000 ton ship and it's armed with eight 14.4 inch guns. That's my 60,000 ton ships, and it's armed with 15, 15 inch guns. Nine, 16 and a half inch guns. Yeah. Let's fight this battle. Why would I want to withdraw this one? I'm going to go into this battle. And take them. Everyone hide behind the frigating battle line. We're just going to charge in. Hello, Killerman. Can a class question for you? I have read for the London Assembly class, they looked at triple eight inch turrets as mentioned by uh, Passing More Freedom. Do you have any extra ones? Since, since our only car cruise in the 1920s with 12 I would be something. It would have been, but the trouble is was getting underneath the 10,000 ton limit. So it would actually be nine times um, three triple turrets. So it would be nine guns. And they decided that the question was whether the extra gun was worth what they felt was the extra survivability offered by having the guns distributed around four turrets. And they decided in the end it was actually better to have the extra turret rather than the extra gun. But the RN has a cruiser design in 19... Started in 19... Started work in 1959, completed in roughly 1940, which would have had 12 9.2 inch guns in four triple turrets. And that would have been absolutely gorgeous. Oh, it would have been uh, the, the Yorks, sorry. Let's put it this way. Let, let's start this off with the Yorks. They honestly... How do I describe the Yorks? Um, I have a lot of battle cruisers here. <laughs> oh, I have my battleships. Um... And the destroyers. Oh, huh. There. Yeah. There are my battleships. Uh, there's one of those that can do 29.4 of 3 knots. That can do 29.3 knots as well. BBC Ruin Resistance. And so can Bellafon. So, if I take... Conqueror and put that in the fur in, in division one. So conqueror, you're going to division one. And fright, you're going to division two, which is going to be my fast one. Um, 
resistance, you're going to division 1. And they can all do 29.3. They can all 23.4. Australia, you're going into the screen division, but that's because we're taking out, oh, you, that's easy enough to work out which, uh, which are the two slow ones. You become screen, got a bad line. And you're going to avoid torpedoes. You are going off hunting. You are going off hunting. You are going off hunting. Um, take you to full speed. You to full speed. You to full speed. You to full speed. And await to hear the crashing of ships as they all bash into each other. Yeah, the, the Yorks, oh, the entirety, the Yorks are kind of like what I worry modern governments might do, because it, it sounds great on paper to make, you know, you delete a turret and you'll make things cheaper, uh, make things better, but you actually made, they actually end up paying almost as much and having almost as much crew as a regular county, and then they were being slower and actually not as capable. So, yeah. The battle line, Irresistible, Hannibal, and Nelson. That's not a good group to take on. Oh. <laughs> oh my. Hannibal, hello. <laughs> you look like you're ready to eat something and a bit hungry. Um, and hello, Nelson. Nelson is a lot smaller than Hannibal. Basically, Hannibal's sitting in the middle of his line going, no one is going to take these old bo uh, these old ships, because I will take them all out. I will take out everything. And everyone. Give them the best firing speed. Best speed for firing, because I don't think the French can outpace us. Under any circumstance. I'm trying to identify the ship, but it's... Oh, it's a slow battleship. It is. It looks like it's using a G3 design. Okay, which one of you is closest? Which one of you is my fastest? Division 2, hello. Right then. You're chasing at full speed. You're going to get as close to them as physically possible. This is not necessarily sensible to do with a battleship, uh, 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 this sort of a formation, but it's the only thing I can do. I've ignored my building capacity for so long, I have no idea what it is. I should go back and look. I keep paying to be upgraded every chance I get. Basically, if I could go back in time to World War Two, the thing I would order rapid construction of would be a whole load of 9.2 inch gun battle sh uh, gun cruisers. Because if you look at that, the Royal Navy could have, there are a fair number of yards which could rapidly build those, and if you pushed on rapid construction of the carriers as well you've ended up with some really excellent task forces and a 9.2 inch gun cruiser gun heavy cruiser is enough firepower to do the vast majority of the jobs but more importantly if they can go fast enough which they would be designed to do they can reinforce the fast capital ships in their you know dealing with the uh, in dealing with the enemy battleships right then you. 
out to spill speed. You to full speed. You to full speed. Mm, you are my fastest group. Oh, they are, you are. Hello. So we have the f four of you coming in nice and close. So basically my plan now is to have divisions two and four get as close as they physically can. Yes, well if you think about it, if you'd done the rapid con order, uh, if you'd in 1937 when everything's going to pot, you'd ordered them. The Royal Navy could have been taking some delivery in 1939-1940. Because basically the idea was to scale up the county class and build them. And you could have, if you'd had four or five of those in World War II, that changes a lot of the scenarios. Because it also changes the scenarios for a lot of the opponents. Because if you've got nine, if you've got ships going around with 12 9.2 inch guns, there is almost no way you send out a Deutschland class anywhere. Because that thing gets caught by one of those, it's massacred. It's going, yeah, I've got 11 inch guns. Yes, you have six of them. I have 12 9.2 inch guns. I am faster than you. I have probably better and more armor than you have, because let's be honest, you were built with the flower of World War I technology still being developed. And um, more important than that, I have friends coming. They're just It's just not a scenario you want to be in if you're a Deutschland to go up against a 12, 12 9.2 inch gun uh, cruiser. How fast can this thing go? 26.3 knots. So it's top speed 26.3 knots. It's in the range now of pretty much all the six inch guns. We might have. Yes, we have the capacity in gun manufacturing. It's going to sound terrible, but with 9.2 inch guns, we're producing a lot of those. We we were work, still working on those barrels, and we had a lot of barrels say left over from some of the World War One defenses we'd built up, etc., which we could have reused the barrels of. It's uh, the barrels were good for the 9.2 inch guns. So honestly, that was the remo. This is a re there is a reason I haven't just plucked 9.2 inch and the, the idea. That was the the scenario we could work through most quickly, and we wouldn't have had to manage because we had a pool of 9.2 inch gun barrels we weren't using, so they're sitting there, being stored nicely. They need to be realigned, but that's not going to be much of an issue. 
Uh, we'd probably want newer and better breaches, but again, that's not as much of an issue as it might seem at certain points. And, you know, we could do these things. So, basically, you put the 9.2-inch guns into service, you could have got, I would reckon, between 4 and 8 built by 1940, early 1941. And those cruisers would have, abs uh, whilst building everything else and everything else being at the same pace and the same construction rate as, as um, you did, did historically, and I would not be surprised... If that, let's put it this way, that would change quite a lot of things. It would make it pretty much impossible. Where are they? It would make it pretty much impossible for the Royal Navy to be overwhelmed as much as it was in terms of dealing with fast ships. Bang us. Slight closure of number of gun pits and late don't... Yeah, because you're talking... Uh, the gun pits you are talking about, and there were a closure of them, there still were enough available there, and there was still enough infrastructure there. Plus... <sighs> Look, it can be overstated, because a lot of the ones which were closed, they were useful infrastructure, and they would have allowed for far easier expansion. But they were also the less capable ones, and they were the less um, modern ones. So yes, the 9.2 inch could have been dealt with, and besides, we had a we had a program of it. It's one of the things is the 9.2 inch pro gun program because of the guns in various defence positions in Malta, in Australia, etc., and all those sort of places. 9.2 inch guns around the world. We still we maintain the infrastructure for maintaining and repairing those. So those pits, those scenarios which they were which they depend on, weren't the ones which were closed. They just weren't being used as fully as they could because we had this pool of guns barrels which we didn't use and by the time we're sort of t talking about using them well you know what is it about the ai and not being able to keep up it's slower than all of you are Let's go hunting. Maximum speed, please, everyone. First one to find it gets a toffee. So, It's it's one of those things. The nine point two inch gun fast battle, uh, fast cruisers, 
could have been produced and would have been useful. Uh, it would have broken the treaty system and would be emitting the treaty system had broken. But it would also have immediately made quite a few other nations look at their own cruiser programs and go, ouch, and they couldn't as rapidly adapt them. You know, Japan going, well, we've, we're upgrading our light cruisers to 8-inch gun cruisers. Okay, well, we've built some 9.2-inch gun cruisers. Yeah. Trump that. Trump, you know. I, I wouldn't be surprised if the Americans accelerate what, become, uh, what became the Alaska program as a result. So the Americans would have their 12-inch gun cruisers in service quicker. And actually, that might help the World War II out even more, because if they're available for some of the things like Guadalcanal, etc., then you have a really interesting scenario if you have large, fast cruisers involved in those battles with 12-inch guns. Say it's trying to cross my T. I have sixteen and a half inch guns though. And yeah, they're gonna cause a big big bash at this range. Because we are very close. And Australia doing what Australia does best. Australia and New Zealand. Two ships which do not understand the concept of, oh, you trying to damage me? Look, Australia is literally sailing within point blank range of a battleship. Pouring fire into it. And she's just picked up a little bit of damage. She's got her paperwork, her paint works around. Yeah, Mirabu's gone. That's the six. Um, Essex, considering the fact the Essexes put the grass bay back. Uh... It was HMS Exeter. Um, Essex is another county. So the Exeters. Don't worry. I'm just looking at going. Um, yeah. Don't worry. I've, it's not the first time I've heard that mistake. And don't, don't worry. If anyone else, that would be a normal one. But e Essex is its own county. Um, so that's the thing. Um, uh, Ali loves history. A single 9.2, even fresh out of the shipyard, would have made an actual kill. Yeah. Lance, I think Austria might benefit from some 4 inch guns in addition to their 6 inch. Potentially, but she's an older ship, so I'm not really worried about her. Like, is Austria trying to get close enough to send over the kangaroo boarding teams? Uh, I think they would talk about the drop, bear bo the drop bear borders, let alone the kangaroo borders. Kangaroo borders could have hopped that distance ages ago. Oh, today's brew ships. I have just had a lot arrive. My Hutchinson's History of the War pictorial. And so 
I'm going to begin a series of roughly three, I think, of the brew ships are going to be devoted to going through this hall which has arrived, because it's Hutchinson's pictorial of the Second World War. Um, <laughs> this is this is not fair. This is, uh, this is like six battle cruisers, five light cruisers, and oh, how many destroyers? Two, four, six, eight, nine destroyers versus a cruiser, a light cruiser, and a destroyer. Um. This is a clash of fleets. We sure this is a clash of fleets. <laughs> it doesn't feel like a fleet. Ah, oh, this feels like they're crying. 18.7 knots, 22.8. The de destroyer can do 36.7 uh, knots. Okay. So, yeah. The destroyer is probably going to be good because the French destroyers have so far been good, and I really haven't invested enough in my destroyer forces because I've been building so, uh, the challenge was to build as many battle cruisers as I could. Oh, I also have a battleship. I forgot I had the battleship. So, let's put. These are all 29.3 knot ships. Um, incomparable. Quickly go into... Uh, go into your own division. Detach. And we're going to... Take... Defense, add it incomparable. Both of you are going to go absolutely nutso and do your own thing. Battle line, that's good. I'm going to add you two into the battle line because. That gives me that keeps my two older battle uh, light cruisers under uh, battle cruisers under control. Uh, Infinia, go with them. You're going out hunting. You are screening them. And into the screen, into the screen, so I've got three screens, each of three destroyers. I have one really modern destroyer out there. That. That's out hunting, that's out hunting. They're out hunting, and it's hunting. Okay. Organize. Crash, bash, wallop. I'll set up the overhead camera. I don't necessarily have an overhead camera. Yet. I do have a suitable stand, and I do have a far better camera than I was previously using, which is still connected in, which is the actually the old camera I used for the old web, web, web broadcasting. So my plan is to use that. Excuse the, excuse the small bird there. I love the fact that Darren Hound's son was on the King George V and Bismarck son. His memoirs are interesting. He's like, I was glad when Bismarck opened fire on Romney first. Then I slapped myself, because that's the old man ship. Yeah. And a 
as usual, my light cruisers are out hunting. No. Let's go find out what's doing there. So technically, this is a cruiser, a light cruiser, and a destroyer. So I am going to try to basically do to run this fight by leading my light cruisers. And pretty much ignoring everything else. I have now spotted a cruiser and a light cruiser. And I'm directing firing on everything. And my plan basically is a high speed run launching torpedoes from between them. I would also say, in the defense of Darren Paul Hamilton's son, um, the odds were he probably felt that if anything could survive being hit by uh, torpedo, uh, hit by fire from the Bismarck, it was going to be HMS Rodney. Because let's be honest, Rodney is one of those ships which doesn't understand the concept of, oh, you're supposed to be causing me damage. This is currently just focusing it on. I have no idea. Where is my other light cruiser gone? Infinina, come back here! Infinina, get over here now! Right in. Not loose. Tight formation. Tight! I will make it normal, but, you know, not loose. Not that loose. That should just about scrape by. Yes, it did. Whew. Right then. Gentlemen, how many are for my next UAD campaign? Rebuilding Roman Empire. Step one, if it touches my drone, it's mine. Step two, if it touches me, it's mine. Step three, profit. That sounds very pragmatic to me. Uh, 19, 1940s overpressure measuring technology. Midshipmen who were loitering and couldn't sham shield their way out. There were many ways of checking for overpressure. Oh, good lord. Where is the rest of my fleet, by the way? Can I just find... Am I fighting this entire battle retribution? Because I know my light cruisers are good. But this isn't supposed to be left to them. What the friggin' are you doing, AI, over there? The whole point of having the AI commanders is so that it simulates real battle and you can read this command structure going on and, you know, know it's going to be doing roughly the sensible thing. 
And I'm fighting the battle over here, and all my commanders, including my own division mate, are over there. UAD, this might be a small problem. So, Retribution is a light cruiser taking out a heavy cruiser quite happily at the moment. Um, there is supposed to be a French destroyer somewhere around here. If my torpedoes could be ready to fire, that would be really helpful about now. Retribution sank due to excessive fire. That's probably because I slowed her down. That's on me. Mainly I slowed her down because, frankly, there was no one else around to actually do the job. Come on, Infanina. You're coming in. So, that's my poor command that lost that ship. Because I was getting so annoyed with, uh, with the fact that Infinity Retribution was the only ship. I got so annoyed with that, I forgot that we were getting so frigging close that their actual... Weapons could cause damage. She's sinking? Due to fire damage. It's, it's always the fire damage on the older on the older light cruiser, the older older Chesters, the original Chesters. It's always the fire damage that gets you. As battle cruisers finally got to within range. Now, I'm not going to get so close with Infanina as I got with Retribution. Infanina is going to do this. And then, she's going to do this. Now go off and find the enemy. Because they are somewhere around here. Enemy smoke spotted to the east. Let's see if we can find this destroyer. <sighs> Southeast. I don't fancy spending my entire life hunting a destroyer down. How was that a defeat for me? In what way is that a def They got 1901 victory points? How? I sank a cruiser and a light cruiser. I lost a light cruiser. Are my light cruisers considered that viable compared to them? That frankly, that I losing them is worth two of their ships.
Because that's wrong. Excuse me a second. Yeah, um, you just saw a thing which I'm fairly certain said that they were that the um, G and H class crew the battle uh, destroyers were armed with two uh, for a two twenty one inch torpedo launchers. They're armed with two quadruple twenty one inch torpedo launchers. So that's eight torpedoes. Hey, thank you, Pagmas. Gifting a member, a, a gifting sub, uh, subscriptions. There are some things which are advantage, uh, which are able to be advantage with subscriptions. I'm not sure. I have set some things up for subscribers on this on Twitch. Where is my other naval mission going? Ah, naval mission going on over here. Ba -da -ba -da 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 -da. God, I was doing that. Move to there. Everything goes. Um. Okay, you go. You head to there. <sighs> the trick of the campaign is all nations. Can't declare war on Greece, Egypt, or the Ottomans. The plan is to flood the Med with unrestricted submarines. Yes, it means sinking innocent transports, but it's the only way I know. It works. Ooh, I love history. Is a subscriber and has... Ah, the one of those, yeah. Well, it's silly that on my phone I'm pulling M62, but it wouldn't let me use the same on the computer. I have no idea why. Sometimes they do weird things. They do do some really weird things. I've got five submarines here. Uh, where should I move some submarines to? I'm moving three of them up to there. Of <laughs> course, fun. Um, that's me being mildly naughty. And honestly. Oh, I want to move some of these submarines up to um, Singapore. Bam, bam, bam. Move all of them up to Singapore. And these are all damaged and being repaired. For some and for some reason, they have all been sent to Penang, which has 17,000 tons of port capacity. Versus being sent to Singapore, which has 222,000 tons of port capacity. Why? Why, game, do you do this? Why do you send it to the yard which cannot physically accommodate them when there is literally a port not that far away which can accommodate them? Why? It's the thing I find most annoying about this game. Uh, my maximum shipyard size is 260,000 tons. My maximum shipbuilding capacity is, well, near enough makes a difference 700,000 tons. And I'm trying to build 2.5 million tons worth of stuff at the moment. In terms of built and remain uh, build and repair. Because I've got 26 building, 24 repairing, and roughly that's a 50 50 split. Oi, caramba. Research. Ooh. We've got that could be useful because I need a, I need underwater acoustics and ASW boost. I do need that, but uh, let's go for turret mechanisms and big guns and see what comes from that being invested in. Oh,
And let's, the fix the route finding. Ships no longer use North West Passage. That's good. Come on. If you're at war, being naughty is the way to win. I think so. I would say so. Um... Kind of useful. Let's see if that works. Human tracking not working today. I don't know, it probably will start working when I don't want it to work. If I say so. Okay, it's locked. Yay! That's the trouble. I was moving too quickly after to waving my hand. Ah. And apparently, if I nod, I can confuse it enough to lose it. Sorry. Should not be this distracted by it when it works, but it's good though. So. Both on screen. That. That's a max speed. That's max speed. That's max speed. And go hunting. Um, I've finally got my Ozbot, Obsbot camera working. Which I've had for a while because a very nice subscriber did donate the money. And it's just been getting it to work with everything and getting it to work the system. And finally I found out what was mucking it up. Basically, the Obspot and XSplit on my computer were having an argument. And I'm not sure what it is, but it seems to me that the fact that I think XSplit doesn't like being on a computer which has the quantity of teams I have on my computer, because I have teams for the various teaching I do. And I have to have different team setups for the different universities, because they all use a slightly different evolution of teams. And theoretically, you should be able to log in and use the same app, and that's the theory, but they all have, they don't do it that way. Um, so yeah, it's, um, it's fun. So, but there again, I managed to, um, get rid of one of my versions of Teams recently. And that seems to also made XSplit happier, so maybe it was just literally one version of those data sets of teams. But yes, Obspot, and it's um, this one. It's, fi it's finally set up and working. Tiny little thing, and a very cool camera. But it frees up my old webcam, which I had to use for previously for all my work, which is this. Which is actually quite a good camera. To... Um, do the stuff I need to do in terms of video, uh, of looking at pictures, uh, looking at the magazines, and looking at the pictures.
Why are you firing a torpedo at that range? I mean... I am basically planning on getting close and launching torpedoes. That is my basic paradigm of my battle plan, but you know. Um, torpedoes launch. Launching even more torpedoes. I don't know if any of my torpedoes actually scored a hit, which is annoying. They're also reloading their torpedoes. As am I. But yeah, the Tonan has been hit and sunk. I'm presuming by torpedoes. This is heavy flooding. OBS is fingers crossed. So yeah, so the, the, the plan is to migrate completely off XSplit completely and can migrate off Teams completely. Then I can cut down those costs, but also that means I can cut down on having as many systems, and I can get it sort of all working happily. Oh, I was actually planning on putting it onto my old microphone arm for the overhead pictures. Because I do have an old microphone, which doesn't work for me because of where normally, because of this room and space where I'd have to put it, because where it normally would go would actually cause me an issue in terms of being able to use the rest of the room properly. But, but he says, for the purposes of doing this, actually it'll work. And actually, if uh, it's all sort of the things, it's a case of working out what we do and what we do in the place. Eventually, I'd like to be in a scenario where I have a boom mic come down and I have an overhead camera that comes down so I could point out a book in my office scenario. So, an overhead mic and an overhead boom, an overhead mic and an overhead um, camera system. Wow. Oh, good lord. Four submarines and one light cruiser, and a light cruiser got through. That's disturbing as anything. And they were off to reinforce Singapore, weren't they? We will have to still reinforce Singapore, though. Um, submarines...
Let's build 48 submarines. I'm not going to select ports, I'm just going to let them fill in as they need to get around the world. They usually do that quite well. That I want to do research. That's all for out. Yeah, let's go back to world. I see naval invasion. Chances of getting for fifty-seven percent. Yeah, I need more so, more vessels over there. They'll hopefully get there, but the French are looking strong because of the sheer quantity of ships I need to put into here to invade southern France. So, politics. Naval invasion of France. Choose Provence. Southern France requires two million tons. But if I'm invading southern France, the French can't really do anything else. And with the army coming down from northern France and southern up from southern Spain, and... Hopefully I'll be able to move some of these ships out to join these formations at a certain point. Uh, maybe. I think the least I can do with moving ships is move Itchen and Saracen south. Move. Persian is in business, uh, is doing something. Yeah, that should all be done. Let's start next time. That's the hope. That's the hope. The new office. If. Uh, that is definitely. Yeah. Although, it's going to sound strange, I'm going to miss this office. I've been living, I've been pretty much working and living from here for three years. Now, it's funny to think how long I've been in this office. Two, three years, pretty much. 2020, yeah. And so this office has been where I left, prepped for Canada and left and returned to after Canada. It's where I prepped for Australia and returned to after Australia. It's where I've done all the editing, where I've grown all sorts of things. Um, Dave Reefit. Oh, oh, what was it? Oh, oh, oh. Does anyone remember what the R means? Is it refit? Reduce crew. Is that? Well, that crew seems to be per uh, full. So, what does the R mean? Anyone know? But that's free Chester class, so um Oh that's just not even a fair fight. Oh I've got Mark One nineteen inch guns. Repair. 
So they're currently in for repair, yet they're coming out for the opera. Uh -oh. Sometimes I don't answer scan this game. Yeah. I've made sure to take lots of paint, a uh, picture, uh, you know, I still like this colour, this particular paint colour. And I think I would paint my office it again, because I rather enjoyed the orange. It's, it, it's going to sound strange, when I was picking out my colours for my room, everyone was telling me, you're off it, you know, you should go with this colour, blue, this, that, the other. And I went, I'm going for orange with blue on the trim. And I went, that's weird. White bookshelves, blue trim round the doors and the windows, orange on the walls, and silver on the roof. It's kind of like an inverted um, can. And inverted iron brew can. And, you know, I've liked it. Ah, you should have some some less. Yeah, uh, it is. It I have kind of outpaced book storage capacity in this room very quickly, um, far more quickly than I thought I was going to. But that's also because I honestly, and this is going to sound terrible, I forgot how many books I had. Because prior to COVID, I had roughly three office spaces I was using. Um, I had two at one university where I had book uh, where I had shelving space which was all mine, and you know office space and you know uh, uh, and, and one at another university and this these spaces had queue had lots of books in them, and I brought crates of books back from them during before COVID uh, when COVID hit, and I I could get so many books into the house. I didn't realize quite how many I had. And even now, as I said, I said recently, I found a whole load of boxes which I'd forgotten I had. What a status of iron brew coins. The iron brew coins are, the status is they are under order, I think, or about to be ordered. It's, there is, we finally managed to have a meeting where we managed to get all four of us together, not ill, not do it, not, not not ill, not in another country, not all those things. All four of us together, sort it out and sign off and things. So they're either ordered or being ordered this week. And then everything should be being put together is what I understand. Um, basically, we're, we're organising all sorts of things and putting all that together. Um, it was a long meeting to work that one out. Not really. It was basically a case of, we've got it, it's all done... Just needed to get. We just need all to be there to sign off on it for obvious reasons. So you couldn't just have someone going off and doing it on their own, and that might sound a little bit bureaucratic, but it's also kind of sensible to have that some of those sort of, sort of things in place because it stops other issues turning up, like people going, you know, later on someone going, oh, but you spent X on this, and when you could have gone to this place, well, in this way you signed off on it too, is the easy answer to stop any problems. Yeah. They are running away from me hard, aren't they? Let's end this battle. No, it caught a draw, but they'd never have served up to the fight. Okay, move to there. There should be enough tonnage.
we are going to move as much tonnage as we physically can into that area. We we'll probably need more tonnage, but we will find if we have to find more tonnage, we will. They are almost repaired. I don't know. Basically, the UK is turning into one massive, massive minefield. Which I'm not exactly annoyed by. Thank you, Pangos. Trouble, trouble, there's such a spelling mistake on items you ordered. Happened with a poster of an item I have. The first batch was bad. Yes, so the thing is, again, it's it's being careful, it's being, and it's doing right, but also it's a case of, we want to do everything right, and you are dealing with four pretty much perfectionists. Even Dan, who is the one who claims, oh yes, I'm not a perfectionist, you know, I'm a medical doctor, I, I, I understand things can be, you know, less than perfect, we have to adapt, etc. No, 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 he is an absolute grammar of a perfectionist. He, if he's watching this video, he will know exactly what he means, and he is. He is a grammar perfectionist, and he will go through everything and check the grammar. And so that adds, if you can all imagine what it's like when you've got one perfectionist in a group, in how much time Dad adds on to something. Imagine four perfectionists. the ships that were down here gone. Because I'm sure there's a fairly large number of fleets down there. Chances of getting 49%. I need to add more ships down there. Why are you going that way? I have no idea, but apparently you are. Let's 
go to Suva. Let's move ships. That makes more sense directionality wise. And we have a battle cruiser sitting down in Hobart. I forgot all about you. And I shouldn't have forgotten about you. You've got nine sixteen and a half inch guns. Yeah. I should not have forgotten about that. Can someone please check <laughs> how many ships I have around here that I've forgotten about? <laughs> how many battle cruisers did I spam? Okay. It's not fair. Expecting to remember that the fact that where all my 34 battle cruisers are and 105 cruisers and 136 submarines. And currently I'm building 24 more battleships and 48 more submarines. Um, Paul, I've worked with a group of where all were, and sometimes that is really good enough, has to be said. Yes. Something back to didn't, Jonathan Moon, something back to didn't have the rather entire missing typo, but for some reason the address was missing. Something none of us realised until it's time of the event and only a few arrived. Ah, oh, I don't know. Up here. It's here. This. Yes, you are now still following me now. Hello, random Dale fan. How you doing? Um. My monthly balance. My naval funds are enough that I can actually play for my war many, many times over. 16 and a half inch gun battle cruiser. So my plan is to basically make the entirety of this area a nightmare for anyone trying to come to see me. I've got three light cruisers sitting together in Riga. Oh, that's nice. They're all Chester 2s. Oh, that's good. What are they doing? Oh, of course, they're defending my, my Baltic interests. Yes. I do need to build some. After I've completed these battleships, and they should be completed soon, I then I then need to build some more light cruisers. Random Dale fan. Oh, my fine spine feels like it's made of rice krispies, but I'm better off than a lot of people as well right now. Yep, but that's still not fun to have. I do have some massive minefields over large areas of the sea. They've not asked for a massively bad trade deal, so that already makes me happier about them. Border Patrol. Man is a Whippet class. 
Ranger is Independence Class Battle Cruiser. Which you've got eight of four sixteen inch guns. Ah, it's owned by Greece. Um, I would say what let's fight the it's not really Britain versus France, is it? It's a Greek battle cruiser versus them. Anything ready? Yeah, some lots of things apparently ready. Devonshire, that can go in there. And there are still repairing damage. Anything repaired is damage. <laughs> oh, good lord. Well, of course they're not, because they're in Barcelona. Which frankly does have enough space for them, thankfully. It's about the only one which has enough space for them. Their repair hierarchy is very high. And I'll try and get those ready as soon as I can do. But also we want to get... Those repaired as quickly as possible. Is there? Actually, let's go see. Are there any ships around here that are not being in use? No. Let's go to building fleet under construction, repairing one month, repairing one month. Da -da -da -da. Lots of coming available in one month time. That's the next click. Uh, commissioning. Three months for those to commission. And then that's going to be... I'm going to have four, eight brand new battleships. <laughs> That'll be useful. Bulwark class. So, fairly decent ships, if I remember correctly. Uh, yes. So nine 15-inch guns. Top speed, 34 knots. 36 inch guns and yeah decent amount of armor so three months time by the time it's December 1932 I should have eight more battleships also that should have taken down my construction Repairing, refit, masses are uh, quite a fair chunk. Um, potentially it's a nightmare for my own commerce, but I know where it is. So the trouble is that means all my commerce does as well. It's not really a practical thing once you allow the sheer amount of commerce through, but you know.
Okay, let's go to politics. Uh, Germany, we oh, good lord. Italy, Italy we can improve relations with. So, Italy we have a chance. Germany is looking problematic, so I'm probably going to have to keep those battleships. Instead of being able to send them to the Mediterranean to back up the invasion of France, I'm going to have to do a lot of that. America, I've got good relations with. China, I've got good relations with. Japan, I've got good relations with. So I'm fine on those fronts. So my Eastern Empire is fine at the moment. France... I can't do anything at the moment. Because I've done stuff with Italy. So I don't really care. Um, big guns, one month VA. Torpedo propulsion, don't need to have that uh, selected anymore. Submarine hulls, don't need to have that selected anymore. Mines... Maximum minefield size increases. Hull protection. Oh, we're going for hull protection. Anything else I want to push in? Rangefinders, I think, but I doubt rangefinders aren't really close to anything at the moment. I have got radar. I have got radar. They're now 19 months to build them. So that's over a year. They are two months of through commissioning. Once they're commissioned, then that's one month away from going through commissioning. And that's six months. These are 19 months. So 19 months is fairly decent for me because those will be hood class. Implacables should all be in service. French completed the repair of a lot of ships. <laughs> the French economy should be absolutely destroyed by now. Fight, and I'm going to command this battle myself because the only way I seem to get the required amount of destruction of the enemy is if I command them myself. I'm enjoying the fact that a number of people are going, I didn't realize the Japanese had torpedo boats. They did. They had all sorts of interesting things. So, Orion, they're cable 29.3 knots, that's cable 32 knots, so that can go free safety. Those can go on under some reason. And those... Actually... Um, let's put you also on free safety for the moment. And just go to everyone to maximum speed and let's go see what the enemy are doing. Um... What are you doing? So I can put you on AI while you're under instructions. Let's find out what they're doing. Um, oh my. Hello. You look pretty. You are pretty. So you have... Let's see. 24 6-inch guns you do, don't you? And 9 16.5-inch guns. You're very pretty. 
Is your sister the same as you? Ah. She is a different class. She also has nine sixteen and a half inch guns. But she's capable of 30 knots. You're both capable of 29.4 knots at the moment. That's fine. That's fine. You're perfectly good for me. And you've only got 12 6 inch guns. Okay. Let's go have a look at Dermature. You're capable of 33 knots. You're armed with 13 and a half inch guns. And a whole load of 4 inch and 6 inch guns. Mm. 4 inch guns are case mated. I think you have a lot of 4 inch guns there. You seem to be one of my older battleship types, uh, battle cruiser types. But very capable. That is one of the things I was trying to get into the actual discussion with Japan, is that they were very capable when they wanted to be. Uh, but you also have to remember, they do suffer because of how much they've invested in certain things. It's one of the interesting things is that the motor torpedo boat, really, the advantage of that come from having a thriving motor yachting industry. And the Japanese hadn't really developed that domestically. They, the, the people who'd had the economy to import that had been the one to have that had imported from abroad. Whereas in Britain and America, they had built their own, and it was those ships, those builders, the builders of those yachts, which had, to a large extent, to a large extent, were the basis of the British yacht building capability. But then, it was kind of interesting because... I love the sort of the, the Japanese have some really interesting ideas, but because they didn't hadn't really been doing those things in the war year, they hadn't developed their own pattern, and so every time they get reports of what others are doing, they think the others might be on or something, and they keep changing their minds about what they need to invest in. And honestly, you needed to pick with something and go with it, and that's really not meant in a sort of any kind of rude way but it's like with anything in defense at a certain point anything in sort of procurement at a certain point you make your decision you go with it and you just you hope it's the right decision you don't keep changing your mind because actually the time spent changing your mind that is going to cause you far more trouble than anything else because it's going to mean you're not going to be able to build anything in the t at all and it's better to have something which is not necessarily as not necessarily perfect but good enough to fight the battle than have nothing there at all hello Renona. gentlemen your base capacity is twice mine you're building a three times your capacity yeah That sounds about right. But I do keep upgrading my construction capacity. As often as I can. I don't think it necessarily takes into account just what I've, con uh, what I've captured over the years. in the construction capacity, because I think it should be going up, because, well, yeah. 
Uh, Ryan does look wicked. wicked. Interesting little ships. Six, 2.6 inch guns. So I'm working out what 2.6 is in metric, in millimeters. Because three inch is 76. So 2.6. 60 millimeter guns? Because let's be honest, 25 and 4 is 50.88. Add on set a point 0.6 to that. Yeah, roughly 60 millimeter guns? 60 something millimeter guns? I love what you're saying. Chance to succeed. I, uh, you know, you need 160,000 tons for this. I brought in 540,000 tons for it. They're still going. Chance to succeed. 59%. I bought it more than three times. More than three times. I don't know why I'm yawning there. Three times that are could require displacement. Nearly three and a half times the display required displacement, and they are still going. You might not win. How? Under what scenario might I not? Right, so we have battleships. We have 618,000 tons capacity in Portsmouth. 242, uh, 762, yep. And I'll Commit status commissioning. Mm hmm. Rodney's looking good. Floor's not too damn bad. It's interesting. It's, it is to be interesting to see what could have been if British governments had been a little bit more so excited in naval defence procurement and the infrastructure in the 1920s and early 1930s. Yeah, there are all sorts of options Britain could have done. He could have actually started an escort carrier program earlier. You could have started that, and they, you know the British do have ideas. It's one of those joyous things when you start talking about it, people go, "Well, the British didn't think of the escort carrier till so and so period or something." And you sit there and go. What do you think Argus was? What do you think they were testing out in exercises? The idea of an escort carrier. And the idea of converted merchant vessels. The thing was, they needed someone to volunteer their ships to actually do it. So that's what they went around with. And in return, they get the credit for coming up with the idea. But actually, basically their job was here. You know, 
please give us your ships to do this with. Ooh, this would be fun to do. Let's go do this. Let's go do this. Let's take out the cruisers first. Heavy cruiser, then the two light cruisers. That's our first target. Then we can take out the merchant ships as quick as we want to. So work our way down. We've got three light cruisers and a destroyer. So... So that's just put on that on the division on follow and go. Let's see, enemy's focus folded to the east, that's good. You're gonna follow them, and you're gonna follow them at maximum speed so you can catch up with them. Their maximum speed is 35.2, but they're gonna go 28 knots. Oh, they're not gonna go 28 knots because apparently they can't catch up at that speed, so yeah. You're gonna follow him. They are following you. Let's go and command this. Okay, so I'm against three cruisers. Oh no, I've found the merchant vessels. This is really bad as a rule. As a rule, finding the merchant vessels first is never a good sign. But there again, I'm not too bothered, because that means the French Navy have run away. Save torpedoes. I don't want to lose a load of torpedoes on the merchant ships. In fact, I'm pretty much going to turn off torpedo firing.
All their merchant ships sunk, and not once did any of their crews interfere. My ships are not under the floor, or they come in under tonnage, which historically is great, but in game, pointless if anything in spare tonnage can't be used and makes it harder to invade. Yeah. I'm um, not really able to create new or induce yards, and that's one of the problems, because theoretically I have roughly three yards I'm allowed to build with if I look at tonnage. So I've got three yard, major yards, which is not historically what Britain had. Britain had about a dozen. <sighs> it's annoying. Because if you think about it, you had browns, you had camel airs, of course, you had vicars, you know, you had all sorts of yards you could produce the stuff at. Yes, I'm just letting the light cruisers go hunt. I'm not even bothering to pretend that I'm actually going to do anything else. It's a single destroyer. Sorry. I do keep burping today. I have noticed... It's going to sound funny, but it's something I didn't... Everything else started the same while I was away. And I didn't burp at all. I wasn't sort of didn't have didn't give me help. But um, at home I keep having um, issues with burping. Go hunt. Fairfield's time. You had, that, you had that, tons of them. It's really defining to think the sheer number of ships Britain built in the run up to in during World War Two, etc., and the sheer number of ships they built in World War One. And prior to World War One, some of the yards, even in the run up in during the the you know the Great Dreadnought Race, when Britain is building to match you know beat Germany, etc., Britain has yards going bankrupt. Big yards going bankrupt. Yards which you would think, you know, if it's an amazing emergency, you'd be building battleships in. But they're not, because they don't need to. That's the really scary thing from Germany's perspective. Think about this. Bryn has enough spare capacity during the naval race that even when they are outbuilding Germany, they still have enough spare capacity that places are going bankrupt. Germany is crank is turning on every single sinew is putting everything it can into it that's a lot of the naval race and Britain is beating it without even really trying that's scary Oh, good. We've taken Colchina. So let's go to politics. Let's go to France's naval invasion. Where should we invade next? Amman or Thailand? <laughs> and Amman. We'll let the army soften up Thailand while we take out Anaman and Cameron Bay. And basically, just yeah, this is the this is the real problem when you start to sort of go into the politics, etc., and all the things at the moment. Britain, home state, has forty four million population. Our population six hundred and fifty. So cumulative is roughly seven hundred million population. It's able to call upon. Um, you go down the list. No one else is anywhere close. They've got democracy going at the moment, with communists being in charge, but they've got democracy. 
democracy, 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 da, 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 all the democracies, that's good. Um, we're, a consti we're the only constitutional monarchy government going on. <laughs> oh. I'm not sure what the benefits of being a constitutional monarchy are. Naval budget 40%, budget GDP growth um, minus 5%, province income 10%, Boost military power, twenty percent income, unrest, fifty percent growth. But uh, yeah, does affect things. Centre parties in power. We are admired. So. At the Americans are admired with 174, but we are admired with 1,207 in naval prestige. Uh, provinces, again, 143. Uh, 20 plus 31 is 51. Plus 14, 65. Uh, plus 14, 79. Plus 8. Eighty-seven plus eighteen, ninety-seven, a hundred and five. So we have over half the world in terms of provinces because we've got one hundred five to one hundred forty-three. Our crew pool is disturbing. Um, task forces twenty-two around the world. The French are twenty-five. So they have more task forces, but they have an active fleet of 58 ships. We have an active fleet of 352 ships. Um, 108 ships for the United States. Germany has a fleet of 53 ships. They have five battleships and four battle cruisers. If Germany decides to pick a war with us, I have eight battleship fast battleships in my home area. Um, they will massacre their entire fleet. I am building 65 vessels, and I'm repairing 16. I wouldn't be surprised if the 65 I'm building include a whole load of submarines, which should be complete soon. Yeah, they're all going to be finished in one month. And I'm now down to just building 17 ships. Ah, oh, that should speed things up a bit. Let's see what we can do. Right, please remind me, I'm finishing at 4 today so I can walk the doggies. The floss need their wonders. I am, yeah. There are many advantages to a constitutional monarchy. Many advantages. Oh, goody. Yeah, that's good. Uh, move. Oh, you go up there. We are repairing five battleships in this area, in Penang. Again, I forgot this one, but again, it's it's the joy of this game.
So attempting to set the repair capacity to low, but no, I won't. No, I'm not doing that. How's the naval aviation going? Oh, we're in battle. They're not finished yet. I don't know. Let's go to my uh, finances. Boilers, big guns. And we're going to leave the hull protection there, but then gun out. Hmm. Hmm. That next that improvement's going to be good when I can do it. But first of all, I'll do the other ones. Because in my experience, boilers, engines, armor quality, and hull protection, all pretty good things to have. I want you to build quite big, quite efficient ships. <sighs> it makes things more viable that way. It really does. The fact that I've got Japan and China joining me in blockading France, and I'm at war with the French, and I already have control of northern France is slightly amusing to me. The fact that I'm slowly taking out the French Empire around the world is also amusing to me. Mission my ships. Ooh. What are you now focusing on? Hello. You decided that I was the monkey nuts, didn't you? That's what you did. You decided the packs of you got distracted by the packs of monkey nuts, didn't you, camera? Oh, I don't know. Well, this is the kind of fight I like, but you know, even I start to feel a bit nasty at a certain point. So, this is a single light cruiser. Versus two battleships, three, light, uh, three battle cruisers, and about a dozen light cruisers. Eight light cruisers. And a destroyer. So, let's pause the battle. Okay, so. Alright. Um, Edgar. We're detaching you. You are going off and avoiding torpedoes. You are going off and solo. You're going off and avoiding yourself very easily, you're going to be a centaur. So, Edgar could do 
I'm going to detach you to be on your own for a second. Don't no, no, worry, it won't be long. So they can all do 39.2. Very 2.2. So can Cairo and 7. And you're going to follow them. Right. You are also going to I'm going to put you on. Hang on. Follow them. So you're the battle fleet. And you are going out as my scout. 28.8 knots, 28.2. You are going to screen them. Alright, let's sort this mess out. We have a load of crashing and banging. Really, it should allow you to organize the fleet before the battle begins. Come on, Edgar. We're going to charge in. Everyone else is going to avoid it. We're going to charge it. It's me and you, Edgar. You're... Nine sixteen and a half inch guns. You've been sitting in Australia for ages. You have, I think, six six inch guns and a whole load of four inch guns in casements. Let's go do this. I have faith in you, Edgar. How far is the Flock Research Assistant walk? Okay, so on Sunday, they tend to get a couple of walks. Um, I will take one of them, and the other one usually gets taken out by my sister. We'll alternate, and I'll take one of them to Headley in the morning. So before I do all this, I've gone and done a bit of a walk with them. But then, before I have the long live, etc., on the Sunday evening, I like to give them another walk as well. And so I take them for a rough sort of an extra half an hour stretch the leg sedation. There is no real way Hello, Newfoundland. Right. Hello, Newfoundland. Let's see what we can do with you guys out of the air. Oh, you're low on fuel. Oh, this is really cruel. The Trude is low on fuel. The Trude 
is low on fuel. And where is Edgar? Edgar is getting closer. You're basically decide. Uh, basically, Latrude is deciding which is worse, Newfoundland or Edgar, and it can't pick. This is a problem. Here they have a dilemma. Either way, they're dead, but they have a dilemma. They can manage a top speed of 23.2 knots. In which case, the only ships in this entire fleet which cannot catch them are my two battleships. Everything else can overtake them. Handsomely. I think it's time to give you nine 16 and a half inch guns fighting you. And I'm going to slow down to 23, the 24 knots, because that's my best speed for firing. Surrender due to high casualties. Ugh. The French keep doing this to me, they keep surrendering. I'm not sure it's a function of my, my actual reputation. Hello, Big Fluff. You joined me for a bit. Ah. <clears throat> ah! Hello. Expand, and you'll be able to see him. Oh, I'm going to sit this hand, isn't it? Yeah, it's this hand. Oh. And now you can see the mess that is the oh, boxes that is the rest of my office at the moment. You come in here because you love me, not because you want biscuits, isn't it? It's because you love me. That's why you come and visit, uh, see me in my office. Oh, uh, yeah, and take over. Hello, yes, you've arrived. Hello. You happy? You having a good day? Uh, I know, I know. It was your brother's session this morning, wasn't it? And you object. You don't think your brother has the same fun of it because he takes a backpack with him, whereas uh, a backpack with him, whereas you walk the whole time. Uh, Twenty-four point eight. The battleships are almost as fast. As oh, oh, good lord, no. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I have a fast battleship here. I have a King Edward the Seventh thirty knot battleship here. <laughs> yeah, you have sixteen point four inch guns, but this is sixteen point five inch guns. You have six of them. I have nine of them. Um, yeah, this is this is this is basically going to be the fight. The fight is going to be these three cruisers. And this battle, uh, this fast battleship versus them, with these four coming up hard. Well, not really, because I don't keep their old ships. At least I shouldn't be. I will go through their fl the fleet and check if I'm keeping any of the old French ships. If I'm not, if I am, I'm going to retire them quickly. So, is it that one or that one? That one? Yeah. I just don't like using it. The, the, the office is a mess at the moment because it's basically come back and now organising logistics for going away again. It's it's just... It's, 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 it's fun. The office is a mess because of that. It's always a bit of a mess because it's a lived-in office and it's always functioning. But um, it's kept barely organised to an extent. The fluffy research assistant has, says hello back. Right. 
Yeah, let's do the battle. So, I don't want to arrive with the enemy before my battleship. Because they have got that battle cruiser. So, I'm going to have to pause. Why are you off being a... Okay. So, some of you can do certain speeds, and some of you can do other speeds. Africa is doing 20... Africa, detach. You will screen Africa. And you will go off like that. You. 21.3, 21.3, All limited to roughly the same. Let's see what happens. Let's see if we can catch the enemy. Actually, at the moment, I'm looking at roof racks. It's on my list of stuff to buy because it's it's the, the amount of stuff. And also sorting out what's going to happen with this place um, and what's going to, you know, how this place is going to be looked after. Because, uh, you know, it is going to be looked after. Uh, we've got cousins who are going to make use of this place while wandering. So they're going to look after it all. Spot of the south. Keep following at high speed. As far as you can go. I could reverse and be scouting with the light cruisers and leave you back, but I think it's better to have you with in the front because of what we're going into, because it's a battle cruiser. I don't want to lose a load of light cruisers just because they come up against like, 16 inch guns. Once we get out of the smoke, we can actually, a smog, we can actually go faster. Still love the way there's a fog going on. That's the end of battle. Um, that is pretty much my, and my car is going to be, will be loaded, fully loaded, with all sorts of things on it. Um, as you will have seen earlier when it, exp when the camera expanded, I do have a new system, a new thing has arrived for me to, um, work with, which is going to make life interesting have Starlink. So theoretically, while we're on the move and while we're sorting things out, I will be able to be fully connected to the world and able to do all the stuff I normally do. Centurion, Donegal, move out and go and reinforce. That should be some extra tonnage. Any more tonnage I can send from... Can't send any from Barcelona. Can't send any from there.
Oh, they're all in blooming battles. I don't want them in battles. I want to actually be able to deploy them. Uh, there's a submarine battle going on. Are free submarines? No. No, we're not doing that. I'm not losing any more subs. I keep building them for a reason. I need them to defend things and to lay mines and cause the, the various people very upset to be upset with me. Let's move everything into Anan to basically just, yeah. The plan is to just take Anan quite quickly and just keep stripping the French of everything in their wider empire. Unfortunately, it's not allowing me to invade the African ones, otherwise I would be doing something about them. So, the French are invading Portugal and Portuguese territory, because that's Portugal, which is owner of all that stuff. I'm invading French territory. Sudan is controlled by Sudan. South Sudan is controlled by Sudan. Sudan itself is controlled by me. Italy controls its historic empire here, but there is British Somaliland and Djibouti. Uh, Yemen and Oman are controlled by Japan. Iran, or Persia as it's been called at this point, is controlled by me. Ottoman Empire is still going strong in some regards, but in other regards it's looking rather weak. Hmm, we've got some interesting things going on. And somehow, I've ended up control with southern Russia. I, I still do not quite know how I managed to get southern Russia, and central Russia, and all of this territory. There are rumours there was some lack, uh, some fighting involved, but I'm still not sure about it. The question is, do I move 245,000 tonnes of battleship from Plymouth? I think I do, and I think I know exactly what they're going to do. You are going to go blockade France. As are you. We are going to go and blockade France. We're going to go and block Western, blockade Western France and we're going to ruin their economy. We are already ruining the economy of Southern France by repeatedly invading it. Even when we fail to invade, we still ruin their economy. Is there another naval mission I can do, be doing at the same time? Uh, at some point, I will be invading Thailand. After I've finished my invasion of Man, then Thailand is next. At which point, I have taken all their eastern population. Improve relations. Italy is better looking better. All the rest are looking fairly good, apart from Germany, so... What's causing the negative relationships with Germany? Let's do that. Um, I don't think the cousins will have the same issue with neighbors read their health because um, they're only going to be here for a short time, and none of them have asthma. So hopefully they'll be okay. But also, you know, they're gonna be—they're gonna be 
basically using the, their cousins who are going to be using this as a base pad to go and wander around London, etc. So they're not going to be in at home. You know, you know same that way. I always need to keep an idea. I am German. Um, that destroyed naval relations with France. All the things I can sacrifice in that battle. Oh, well, that's going to be a fight I'm going to do. It's going to be a light cruiser and a destroyer versus a French light cruiser. That's that's a fight I will take. This is a fight I'll take. I know, Big Fluff. You would take that fight on as well, because you ultimately do prefer fights which you are fairly certain you're going to win. Um, save. Save. Bum, bum, bum. The destroyer can do a maximum of 29.3 knots. It's one of my older destroyers. Still cute, though. Oh, that's a cute little destroyer, isn't it? I built dozens of those at one point. And here comes a Chester Craft Cruiser. I ordered a hundred of these at one point. Meant so, always had enough. Hello, Spike. Hello, Leslie. How are you doing? Enemy smoke spotted to the northwest. Let's just do maximum speed. Charge for it. Go on, you can make it. Yeah, da da da. So, would you like your hoodie on? Are you feeling cold? Is that what you've come in here for? You want your hoodie on? Because I have your hoodie here. You left it in here the other day. Mm, no, you're okay about your hoodie, man. Alright, we'll leave your hoodie up here. Oh. You're changing your mind. You would like your hoodie. Just the moment there's fighting, you, would like, you decide you'd like your hoodie. Okay, let's pause this a second. Uh, we come. Come on. Let's, uh, thank you. Let's put your hoodie on. Sorry, poodle wanting hoodie. Hello. Yes, you. You strange, fluffy creature. You are not spoiled at all, are you? Not spoiled at all. There you. You have a woolen coat, you realise. Oh, there used to be a campaign of hug a hoodie. <laughs> the poor camera is not sure who the human is. <laughs> I was going, yeah, that, that could be human. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Hello, hello, hello. Yes. Right. Uh, oh, okay, yeah. Uh, Let's get your ears out, Chuck. You feel good. Oh, hello. You want a, p a biscuit now? Okay. You know, the old saying is never work with children or animals. Which one are you? Where is our flagship? This is why it's good to have these quick clicks on this game, because you can do this and go, yeah, I don't lo lost anything. <laughs> ah. 
Oh, there you go. That's cleared off your eye. He's a very happy, fluffy research assistant. Very happy, fluffy research assistant. Why would I end the battle now? I know exactly where they are. And they're producing... copious amounts of smoke to try and get away from me. That was dealt with. Ah, Liga Rizzo. Luigi Rizzo. A very brave, if slightly insane, gentleman. Yeah, pretty much the entire battle plan for my cruisers is... Keep firing, keep firing, keep firing, getting close. Launch devastating swarm of torpedoes at you. Um, they can do 24.8 knots. They can do 18.1 knots. But there is no way I'm winning that fight. So I am going to battle and I am going to withdraw from here. This is not a refight. This is me getting out of the frigging way. <laughs> oh. Soviet attitude to medals. I. It's an Italian attitude to medals as well. So. No. Sail. Retreat. Avoid. And maximum speed. And bye bye. You've been through enough. You don't need to fight anymore. Ah, uh, well. Fluffy research mo lo locomotion is only needed for one fluff, which is the one sitting next to me. The other one has been taken out on a, uh, on a trip. So, yeah, we might be a little bit longer. While you're running away, let's send a photo of you, of you asleep to your mummy. Let's end the battle.
We know which is more dangerous out of a Mark 14 torpedo and a Corgi. Oh, good lord, yes. You will always lose the fight to a Corgi. I think I've repeated this a few times now, but as you know, as the classic thing on the holiday that, you know, we were sleeping, we, we had our windows open because it was hot. And the conversation went with one of my uncles was more like, aren't you worried about your know, security, etc.? Because you guys don't have guns in this country. He was very nice guy, but he comes from the absolute middle of nowhere in the middle of America. And frankly, I understand why he needs guns. He's about out. He's got about, ooh, I reckon it's a three hour drive to the nearest neighbor let alone the nearest civil and uh, nearest police station so frankly yes you probably you more than likely do need those but you know he was over here for the birthday party he's going you know don't you, do you, do you don't have anything to, you've got the windows open like that's that, that can be you know scary i'm sort of going well they come for into my room they're gonna wake me up and frankly that is not a good experience for anyone if in a nice way, I'm either awake or I'm getting one of my... Uh, in which case, that means you're coming into someone who's awake and who is an functioning insomniac. So will be quite happily awake and will go, oh, good exercise. Or alternatively, will be getting one of the few precious hours of sleep I get. Very rarely. But I do get. In which case, Lord help you for waking me up because I will not be in a good mood. There is literally, there are many levels of pain and fear which will come about. Then you've got the option of my mum's room, where you will a find this gentleman, the rather la the la uh, the uh, senior fluffy research assistant, who is a poodle and is very very good at high agility, high speed maneuvers, and is a light sleeper and is quite very protective of his mother. But that's nothing compared to. It is my mother who, and this is her, one of her furry babies. Lord help you with what she will do to you. She has walking sticks and all sorts of things she uses to help her get around with her arthritis. They will be aimed at you. But the absolute worst thing you can do, the absolute worst thing you can do, is go in through the third window. Because whilst my sister might be the deepest sleeper known to mankind, in her room sleeps a furry demon. And I say this in the nicest way because corgis are very lovely, very friendly. But if they don't know you, they don't like you in their personal space. And their personal space is their bedroom. So if you go in and meet a corgi for its first time, never meet it alone in its bedroom. Always meet it in neutral ground. It doesn't like you going into its personal space. Secondly, it likes its sleep time. Corgis like their sleep. When they're asleep, they are asleep. And you're supposed to lead them asleep. And thirdly, if you're waking them up, you better be bringing them food. So in the nicest way, you are going to be A, introducing it to it yourself to with them in his personal space, which he's not going to like. You are going to be waking him up from sleep without food. This means you go from threat to being food. You are no longer in the category where you are fighting for victory, a win or loss, or to get away. You are fighting for your survival, because the corgi has just decided you were its late night snack, you woke it up, and you're not where you're supposed to be. It will be taking you down. And remember, these are dogs which were bred to herd cattle. Many times their size and weight. They have no concept of you are bigger than, than them. And they also are designed to take kicks from hooves and carry on functioning. So unless you think you've become as strong as a cow recently and are able to kick and with that precision and pain and, you know, strength of a hoof, good luck. Oh, it's got the slow... Yeah. We lost a light cruiser. They lost a cruiser. And a light cruiser. And a destroyer. And that was damage. That was damage. Victory for the British. That should not have been that close.
Run on day one. Cork yourself, buddy. I'm nothing on blue feelers. Um, look, in nicest way, that's not a fight I would like to organize under any circumstance. Um, I, 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 you might say that a blue healer is stronger than a corgi. I don't think either of them are going to give in at any point. I don't think it's, it's going to be a matter of who might be stronger or faster or whatever. I think neither gives in and I think both die in that type. Still are in some Yes, I, I know one of my... Scottish, some of my Scottish family, some of my Canadian family, all use their still use their corgis for dealing with cattle. But I don't think our particular corgis family has had anything to do with cattle in a couple of generations. Although he doesn't realise that because he sees cattle, he thinks, "Hello, I will herd you." <laughs> Runan, how do they keep up? Corgis are fast when they want to be. Lots of light cruiser fights going on. Politics. Highly disrespected naval prestige. Nation's people very content. Uh, advanced, they're claiming that their growth is. Theoretically, their GDP is not far off mine. I'm not sure how their GDP is not far off mine, because, frankly, their GDP seems absurdly high, considering well, the scenario they're in. Because their GDP is actually higher than mine. And I am quite literally bankrupting them. This game doesn't make sense sometimes. Their yearly naval budget is larger than mine. Their naval funds are much greater than mine. They basically don't spend any of their money. They have a huge budget and no money. They don't spend any of it. Um, their army is a third of the size of mine. Their naval, their you know, their crew pool is half the size of mine. It doesn't make sense. There, there are lots of economic issues. <laughs> All right, tiny ski uh, skid steers, which where you stand on the back instead of sitting in a cavern, are also called dingoes. I want one. Eh. They still are expensive, but yeah. Random slavering Australian wolf dog that can bite through steel and makes m most anime young young dairies look polite. Yeah, but there's lots of interesting, fun things going on. <sighs> Run on Belgian Malma. A sick friend. <laughs> yeah. Well, to be fair, this one has three lady Belgian Malnoirs who are his, well, when we go on a walk, you sometimes, you end up with all three of them round you and you're basically the gentleman with the three ladies, aren't you? Yes, and they walk along with you and keep you company. They basically become your, 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 your um, Amazonian protection squad is what you define them as. Yeah. Still not sure how he does it. But yes. Economics model is a bit broken. The economics model is a bit of an issue, but it's not that much of a problem. Honestly, it's nothing I'm I'm gonna worry about too much. Where are all my submarines? 
I have them all over the place. I have literally got some. I've got. They've put pairs of submarines everywhere. That's what I like them to do. On the construction, how's the construction doing? Oh, they're going to be down to 14, a building 14 months away. It's only 6% complete. So less than a year, or just over a year now, until they're done. Well, they'll be nice when they're launched. And yeah, I'm a service electrician, and I want on one one because I can replace two different machines and get uh, to, into a really tight place with that if I if I can't get back home. Same with bucket, forks, and trench boom when I'm a happy sparky. Yeah. You can't really do offensive mining in this game. It hasn't yet really set up the mechanics. So I'm blockading those areas. And I'm basically I'm I, I'm making sure that, you know, this is well blockaded. Uh France isn't getting anywhere from those ones. Uh Bilbao is securing all this area. Yeah, they've still got this economy working, but I'm invading. Repairing only 13 ships at the moment. Oh, that's good. Soon they could be all be done. That would make life a little bit easier. Send the Duke of York over there. That will help with that invasion. How is it when I have got that many times? 705,000 tons versus the 196. I literally have almost four times the tonnage required. And it's still going, you know, maybe only 36% chance to succeed. Note, our backhoe is also a front-end loader, so uh, so it doesn't have the maneuverability that a track day sweater would. I know that some people use the terms interchangeably. Fun times. And as Cosmetic said, those people are incorrect. Okay. Politics. The invasion. Choose province. Oh, I can invade Western France. I can now invade Western France. Oh, I'm doing that. I'm invading Western France. Mainly the reason I'm doing Western France is because I have the fleet all up here, and if I get Western France, then France is officially going to be in a nightmare position. And I want to get all these heading around to there as much as I can so they're ready for what I need them.
they're doing okay. Let's see. What I mean by economy, there is nothing tying GDP to any function beyond its trade, the stage of cipher. You should be able to affect this by building ships, and then there is an infrastructure which should probably be a two factors. One for maximum vessel size, another for the bumper, uh, bumper of dry docks you have and where they are located. Let's move all these ships over there. Move them all out of the Mediterranean as much fast as we can. And then... Should have the desired impact. There are fifteen percent damage. Yeah, if I can get enough tonnage into Western France, then I'm good. And France basically falls. That should be... France should be falling there right now. France should be falling in an arm, and that should be pretty much certain. Chance to succeed, 40%. How the chances of succeeding is not higher than that, I do not know. I'll move another battleship in, though, just to try and add to it. Sheer volume of tonnage would suggest it should be just going, yep, we surrender. On. Also, it's Chinese chilly enough here in Virginia to justify wearing my hide hoodie. Hmm. Hmm. It's a good hoodie to hide a hoodie. My mum really likes her Roots hoodie, which I picked her up at Niagara Falls in Canada. Oh, I can now do cruises up to 23,000 tons. I have gained control of Onan. Let's see. Naval invasion. Choose province. Thailand. <laughs> yep. This should be enough to um, do what we need to do. Slowly, there should be enough tonnage turning up in there. Let's move you in as well. Just turning up with hundreds of thousands of tons of warship and going, yeah. Western France, we need to invade? Yeah.
they should be defended as hard as it can be by France. Okay. I'll let you out. But remember... Don't chase the squirrels too hard. In your hoodie, they think you're far more scary. Sorry, random thing to be doing, I know, but I was checking that the, um, when the, uh, <clears throat> doggy decided to use the, to go to facilities, it didn't hit the hoodie. Let's fight this battle. 36 knots, 33 knots. That can do 18 knots. Well, we'll definitely take out that one. Um, we might well take out those, but I'm not sure. Mm -mm. Let's see, let's start the battle. Let's pause the battle. I forgot we have three battle cruisers which can do that. Um right, so you three are going to go ahead. And um You are going to scout for them. You are going to screen for them. You're all going to be on avoid torpedoes. Please note. You and you are going to form up into one division with you and you screening for them. So <coughs> let's see what happens, shall we? Oh god, more crashing and banging. Oh you're back. You came in? Goody. That hoodie's better than the old one. The old one, you unfortunately, it decided that, you know, dogs wanted an actual hood the shape of a human hoodie. So, if you can imagine, it was a uniform length down the body, not realising the fact that certain things are not angled the same way as they are on the human body, or change them around as they are on the human body. Let's go find these. Hampshire, Drake. Let's have a look at them. So we've got Hampshire, nine sixteen and a half inch guns. Drake. Nine sixteen and a half inch guns. And Europa. Nine sixteen and a half inch guns. They all look like they're from the same class, so it must be three sisters. They all look like they need some maintenance. Um
there is something massively wrong with the game system if I don't win this fight, but we'll see. We'll see. Sink all the enemy ships. Well, there's at least... Don't dive off. Follow. Carry on following. Get closer. In nicest way, the game mechanics, for some reason in the campaign, you turn off to one side and you start firing each other while they're still running away from you. That doesn't work because they run away from you and you're going off to one side and veering away so you can fire more and better at them. Yes, but they're running and you're firing at the very extent, uh, very maximum of your range. So we have four light crews on that side, two light crews on that side, and yet our screening groups are supposed to be made up of three and three, so you would expect three on each side. That would be sensible, wouldn't it? That would be how it would be handled in a regular formation. Oh, that. Oh, you're making a destroyer match pace with a. Of a cruiser, are you? Is this one of the destroyers? No, that's the cruiser. That's good. It's just the battle line being the battle line. Thinking light cruiser now. Just getting worse. You guys doing some weird erratic stuff to get away from a single torpedo, which was not going to hit any of them anyway. Talk about being caught in a crossfire of this ship. And it's making its life worse for itself, I think. Because it's actually giving me more of a broadside fire to fire at. And I think I'm on Hampshire. I'm aboard Hampshire going, hello. At this range, if I miss, it's disturbing. Yeah. I'm not surprised at sinking. Let's end the battle now. Let the destroyers get away. I'm surprised that's victory. And let's be honest, the 6 inch guns were actually an improvement over the 10 inch guns because of the sheer volume of fire they gave and the accuracy and the range actually of the 6 inch guns installed versus the 10 inch guns. It showed how time and how the, you know, engineering had moved on. Still here. Oh, there's still something. You're still over here. No. Go, 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 go. All of you, go. We're sending everything. We are literally sending everything. Not sure why Monarch is not ready to go, but you know. We are sending everything to invade France. 
barring the submarines, because honestly, we don't need to send more models or submarines. But Thailand, yes, everything is going to go invade Thailand now. Over here. It's all for other fun and games at the moment. There is a point at which in this in this campaign scenario where you're just going, yeah, I appear to be doing okay. If you want to wear your hoodie on your walk later, you do. Okay. I'm still not quite sure how that happened, but let's see. We have Monarch with that versus them and them and them, and Colombo. She can do 28 knots. They can do 23.2, 18.7, 18.1. So let's fight this battle. Let's go into the battle and let's do this the old fashioned style, I think. Right on that, we'll put you on to follow. You want to hunt and maximum speed. Oh, I think this might be one of our originals. Oh, she's a hedgehog class, isn't she? She is a hedgehog class battle cruiser. I remember these. Barely any torpedoes. Ah, we found the warships first. That's annoying. But we can do it. Barely any armor, if I remember correctly, as well. Oh, you know. For them, these uh, these ships do not realise that the impending doom is coming up. I am flooding. I have been hit by a torpedo. No, I didn't combine you into the same battle line. I detached you, so you are not that. No, don't combine into the same battle line. What were you do? Why were you doing around the robin there? That wasn't sensible. I know you're now limited to 18 knots, but you're still going past them, and we're going to get you through them, so you can go off hunting. You, go off hunting. Go after them. 
Leave them to the light cruiser. Because I'm coming to take them out. I don't have that many. I just have quite a few different types of battle cruisers, etc. Because I tend to build them in batches of eight, etc. So, I, you know. And I, then I refit them as I can. No wonder you've been taking more long. This is why I do not like combining you into one unit, because you have differing speeds. I always try and put units in units of sympathetic speeds. So they are not uh, not you know spending their time racing around at slow speed. You don't need to be doing this fight. You can go and help engage the, the merchant ships. That's what you should be doing. It's nice of you to keep them occupied for me. And yes, my light cruiser is going through the middle. I'm just about to be hit by a torpedo. That's annoying, but not so problematic. Hopefully she can avoid that one. Yeah, that's that was the right correct action for that torpedo, because at that range I couldn't turn into them. I didn't have the space. Past. That's saved torpedoes, so we fire them when we are capable of pretty much guaranteeing a hit. Seriously, the torpedo crews on this ship are the slowest reloaders ever known to mankind. This ship is somehow being a light cruiser in this configuration 
being straddled with fire from another light cruiser, which is a far newer light cruiser, and a battle cruiser, and is somehow still afloat. That's just... That's either a feat of luck or something. Now, what is it? The other day, a ship which slowed down like this managed to recover almost to 100% of its floatability. In seconds. And yet, my, oh, it was one of the AA ships. But my ship... Yay, we've taken the boss here. Right. AI. You can have in charge. You. Work on the floatability of yourself. Start repairing yourself. I know you're not a... I, I don't think you're a modernized Chester, are you? You've got 36 o'clock speed. You're not top modernized Chester. And they'll help. Still fighting the French? Always fighting the French. Always fighting the French. Hello, Gals for 14. Hello, Leslie. I think Steve is on. Steve was on as well, was he? I don't know. I might have called Steve Leslie. Mike is on. Seriously, at. Which point can any of you... Oh, of course, yes. She does actually have torpedoes. She has no torpedoes left, somehow. Why are you getting into torpedo range, then? Why are you... You have 12 inch guns. Stay at range like I told you to. Well, this is going to be an interesting fight. Can we win this? Well, if I can get to the merchant ships, I can. I'm not going faster than they are, though. But once the French have managed to beat me, and this time I bought a battle cruiser with me. Only one of my hedgehogs. Need a pack of Chesters, that's the thing. I'm out of torpedo ammunition. Six inch ammunition. Is it four and after four inch ammunition or is it
Let's try and retreat. Let's try to retreat. That's your orders. Let's try and get away. Let's see if we can. Can we limp away to fight again another day? Did you not make your chest to basically destroy us? Pretty much. Basically, my choice was build light cruisers or build destroyers. I decided to build light cruisers. I could put more torpedoes on them. I was saying, a bit late today. Kiro training and then driving up north east took my time today. Ah. But how was the driving? Let's see. Oh. Slowly getting further away. Believe it or not, slowly getting further away. Yes, we're on fire. Yes, we're only a little over third percent, a third structural retained, and a little bit of over third floating. Yes, the damage list will be extensive, but it might be just going to. If you want to laugh, I've just fit, uh, finished watching an interview with a US Army colonel talking about modern stuff, but also says Germans invented combined arms. The reason why the Iron struggles at the start of World War II wasn't due to, uh, due to many on one, but due to uh, Robin R RN and backwards thinking, and that's why RN didn't do much in World War I. Guardsman 14, please tell me that's a joke. Please tell me that's a joke. Because if someone is that badly informed, they need to go read some books. Uh, you need to go. They need to go. Uh, that's just. That's just. Uh, that's just terrible. I, I just... 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 I just... What?! What?! I mean... Sorry, Columbo, I wasn't paying attention at that point. Okay. Right. So, um, yeah. Please tell me there was a follow-up interview with someone I don't know, like Andrew Lambert, basically calling them idiots in a very polite manner, 
for the next 10 minutes as they explain how wrong that particular kernel is. Well, to be fair, the Americans did because they achieved their diplomatic aims. So under that criteria, you can say they did do well in the Washington Naval Treaty. The fact that their diplomatic aims undermined their, their wider position well, is neither here nor there. They achieved it, so they, achieved, they did well, in the, they did well in, the, in the treaty. It's just the treaty was, their aims for the treaty weren't exactly sensible for the rest of their aims of their scenario, that their needs. That's the problem. But, you know... But, on in terms of World War I combined arms... Um, you see, there are certain things you can say were German innovations. Their stormtrooper and the forces they put together at the end of World War One are really very, very good and a very clever idea putting together, but I would say combined arms at the end of World War One it comes about pretty much in the British Army and the German Army at the same time. The Germans put it into practice first. Um mainly because the Germans launched their offensive earlier. The British were waiting longer to launch their offensive and coordinating with all the other forces. But then the British bring about the combined arms. And as for the Royal Navy in World War One, they did, they basically, uh, the trouble is for the Royal Navy in World War One is they do their job rather too efficiently. They take over the world and secure it within 1914. Then the world is basically British. Yes, there's submarines going around, but pretty much Britain, Britain and the Allies have strategic maneuver and ability to move their forces at will strategically around the world for, by, from 1914 onwards because the Royal Navy's taken and secured it. At which point, the Royal Navy, all they have to do is sit and watch the North Sea and wait for the German High Seas Fleet to come out. And that's the trouble. You have to wait for the German High Seas Fleet to come out. So, you know, it, it's it's a problem. But it's it's also... The, you're, you're at a certain level of... You would hope, if you're a colonel... Or that level, you have enough of strategic understanding to understanding that's not not doing anything. Um, Uh, you can, but you have to do that for every single task force. So that's what I was doing. I was moving the task force. And I think you can move the slider or you can, you know, do it individually selection. You can do it either way. Check there's no... Ah, there is a knock flick. Da da da. And there's another fleet beneath it. Which I can't get at till it moves, so I'll have to wait till it moves. This is the trouble stacking so many fleets. Right. It is almost 5 o'clock. And at 5 o'clock I'll take... After 5 I'll take this one for a wonder. Um...
let's move some rings over there. I do sometimes wonder about these people and where they come from. I do really do that. Okay, the only one who doesn't really like me other than France is Germany, so I'm going to improve relations with them. Because I might as well. I don't lose anything by doing that. I forgot about this. I forgot about this entire battle fleet. doesn't really affect me losing that much in able to press each. I'm at 1212. If I lose two, that's kind of like me going, hmm. Army losses from special army operations. <laughs> I love that. I love that. Mm -hmm. Oh, I'm fairly sure it is a tongue-in-cheek joke from the devs, because, let's be honest, I think, if I'm not mistaken, this stood up to Ukraine. Let's see, fleet. We have six months till they're finished. Hmm, that'd be soon. Sixteen more battleships coming in. Is it? The AI does control the army in France, and yes. How big is the army in France? I have no idea. I haven't bothered to check. Super Torpedo Protection 2. Mark 4, 13 inch guns. Oh, good. French are losing more troops in Western France than I am.
I am basically turning up with everything I can grab off the coast of Western France. And I mean everything I can grab. And there's also some interesting armies coming in. Ah! Oh. I've got Japan and China all sending the troops to help here. Is this offensive? And the same here. So they've got 17,000 troops to defend. And I'm coming in with... Let's be honest, 25,000 on one side and... Well, about 15,000 on the other side. Active fleet is currently 409 ships. Fairly proficient. Fairly proficient. Hmm. I have lost ships. I'm now down to 80 battleships and battlecruisers. Oh, good. The right wing party has won the elections. Just as long as they don't cut my, touch my, my funding, I don't really care. <clears throat> oh, good. <coughs> Pardon me? Let's see. Um... I think I'm going to do that, that, that first, and then I'll do that. No, I don't. Nice way, that is, half of that is submarines. Which are my defensively deployed assets. The rest are doing the job they do. Well, what's unrest? Unrest isn't too bad. Um, I agree. To, I'd agree to exchange. <coughs> unrest is not too bad, though, right? so I don't really need to worry too much about unrest. And plus five is enable prestige. Again, I don't need it. But it will buy me some time, uh, something with the government. How did I fail to gain control of Thailand? I literally turned up with more force than they knew what to do with. Literally than they knew what to do with. Um, naval invasion. Choose prompts. Thailand. Yes. 
research. Don't need to be doing boilers right now. Internals protection will do. John, do you want Churchill got to mucking around the time invasion? No idea, but I'm presuming it's the army that lost it, not me. Hey, by gum. At least, hopefully, I'm repairing ships in a um, better yard than I normally are repairing ships in. Hopefully, they're being repaired in a yard which can accommodate them, can actually repair them in a decent amount of time. Yeah, it is roughly walkie's time, so I'd better save things and sort things out. So, thank you very much, everyone, for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you found it interesting. I have no idea how long we've been broadcasting for. Oh, it's roughly been four hours. <laughs> Eby gone. And, um, well, thank you. Hope you found it interesting. Jupiter versus Voltaire. Let's do this before we go. Come on. We've got 15 15 inch guns versus 14, four or times 12 14 and a half inch guns. She has up to 18 inches of armour. She has up to 12 inches of armour. 23 knots. 24 knots. I could try to withdraw, but... Because it is one on one. But shall we try it? Let's see. It's worth a trial. Let's try this one. Let's do this, and then I'll go. Ah. Uh, it's always good when they say it. A class has a displacement ranging from 186 to 290 tons. You are either completely redesigned in the class, or, alternatively, you have massively toodled up. So I have 15 guns, they have 12. And they are low on fuel. Now, being low on fuel usually caps their speed. I'm not low on fuel, I think. No, I'm not. Have I hit them at all yet? I have hit them. That's a four inch range. They're almost, a six inch range for me is 13.4 kilometers. Their four and a half inch actually outranges my six inch by 200 meters. Do I think it's worthwhile getting my six inch guns involved in this fight? Hmm. I've only 
got six on each broadside, there's not really much point in it. Not really much value in it in me in me letting that happen because, yeah. Once they have four and a half inch guns get involved, right, then I will get my six inch. But yeah. Ah, Simon David. I'm glad you are. I'm gonna the, try and campaign. Uh, the campaign out back aspect UAD is not bad. It's just you have to realise it's still in development, and it's very much still in development, and it's it's becoming a better game all the time. But this is probably one of the most complicated games that's been put together in a very long, long time. Because there are so many mechanics involved in the ship design. And they are both working on the campaign and they're working on the quality of the ship design as well. Oh, cannon being played. I'm not sure if the sound alerts are working properly, because I think they were behind the vi uh, behind the video. I've got 15, 15 inch guns. You should not be wanting to close with me. You thinking your armor is going to protect you. So far it is, isn't it? Oh, I'm worried about that. I'm worried about that gun. That forward battery is worrying me. There is smoke in a bad place on that one. Smoke in a very bad place. Could do with a golden BB right about now. I think I'm being smart. I should have tried harder to keep you at long range, shouldn't I? Yeah, well, that was try trying to end the battle quickly. Oof. There's also no reason why I like to bring num a superiority in numbers to the fight, isn't it? Yowza. Sorry, Jupiter. That was on me. That was on me. French are capable of building very good ships. It was happening. And if you muck up, you muck up, and they will t they can take advantage of it. I tried to withdraw, and then I fought, and I should have carried on with withdrawing. And I thought, hmm, she has 15 guns, they have 12... Long range might win it, but ours had less armor, so long range fight, we lost. We didn't get the hits we needed. Let's check if the invasion is going ahead. Yeah. There's 800,000, there's twice the strength in the, the, the invasion of Thailand. Chance to succeed, 27%. I'm not sure how the chance to succeed is only 27%. Use the belt there. Uh, again, I do not know. How am I going to do this? I'm going to have to go take a whole load of something to deal the. Um, mm. 
Burst which keep coming up. And it's not as if I'm sitting here chugging down massive uh, fizzy drinks, etc. I wish I was. But I'm not. I have, I've barely drunk iron brew during this morning. Anyway, thank you very much everyone for watching. Take care. And now I'm off to wander a walk of the fluff. I will say thank you Randall Dale fans. Thank you everyone. Thank you Pangman. Thank you everyone. Take care and have fun. Doodles. Thank you Spike. Thank you everyone and see you later hopefully.